All right, uh, thank you. So I'm gonna talk about speeding up your site uh, and as a side benefit of that, making Google happy uh, without writing any code. This isn't the developer track. This isn't a developer talk. I'm not gonna be doing code samples. I'm not gonna be talking about anything super complicated. I'm aiming this for things that anybody could do and everybody should be doing and taking into account uh, no matter what your relationship with WordPress. Come on, is this gonna work? Oh, on, there we go. Okay, so who am I? I'm the Director of Systems Engineering at 10up. 10up uh, is a large WordPress agency. We have about 170 people. We service uh, mostly high-end uh, publishers, Fortune 500 companies, anyone looking to publish content on the web in a secure and scalable fashion, uh, that's what, uh, that's in our bread and butter that we work on. We're a full service digital agency. We do design, uh, user experience, engineering, systems engineering, uh, all of that. So I have over seven years of experience with high traffic WordPress sites, scaling them, helping them uh, be performant. I live in Portland, Oregon, just over here by Mount Tabor. Uh, I have a website, I'll put these slides on eventually, uh, but that's where you can find me and on Twitter. All right, so I was putting together this presentation and I got kind of jealous of my parents. They're both certified arborists. So they get to go to these tree conferences and I'm sure all the slides at that conference are of like beautiful trees or leaves or things that actually have visuals that make sense. I'm talking, now, I'm gonna be talking about like concepts that are like cloud computing or how the internet routes and stuff. And instead of nice trees, I'm gonna have like stock photos of data centers and <laughs> diagrams that nobody wants to see because who wants to look at that? So I'm gonna do my best to make this entertaining. Uh, I'm mostly just gonna, it's kinda just gonna be a discussion about how I approach these problems and what I think the basics are that uh, everyone should be thinking about. So why am I giving this talk right now? This is a talk that is applicable kind of at any time, uh, but specifically right now, Google had this blog post this summer where they talked about how they're going to be using uh, mobile page speed uh, in their site rankings. And a lot of big publishers, a lot of big sites, all of a sudden overnight started seeing their organic traffic go up or go down, and their page ranking fluctuate, and it was a whole different world all of a sudden. Uh, Google's been using page speed for a long time in their rankings. Uh, it's always been something people have sort of paid attention to, but it's kind of been like the, well, what are the things I can do without putting much effort into it? And I'd, maybe I'll do the other ones later, everything's working fine, you know, no big deal. This kind of was Google getting serious about it. This uh, also came along with their crackdown on fake news uh, this summer. Like real fake news, not just saying the words fake news. Um, <laughs> so all of a sudden these uh, businesses, site owners, developers, uh, design agencies suddenly were dusting off those SEO reports that they got a year or two ago when they had an SEO consultant come in and tell them their site should be faster. And we're turning over rocks looking at all the things they could do now to get in Google's good graces uh, because now this was really serious for their business and was making uh, a big impact. So if you're not doing anything and not looking to constantly improve your site's performance and you want to rank well in Google, you are falling behind because everybody else is working really hard at it now. So besides sort of the self-serving, I want more traffic and more dollars and more people on my site, why else would you want it to be fast? Well, think about the actual humans that are browsing your site. Not just like developers and professionals who have MacBook Pros and you know the latest Surface laptop, but your grandmother who has the slowest DSL uh, in the universe <laughs> has to load all that crap on your site. There's all the people at home fixing the grandmother's computers on that slow DSL who also might want to view your site and now it's super slow. 
There's people in the third world who don't have the luxury of the fast connections we have. There's people on super old cell phones trying to view your site as well. And if it loads slowly, if it loads only okay on your MacBook Pro, imagine how it's gonna load on that, you know, six-year-old iPhone. Additionally, it's worth remembering this is the best-selling computer at Best Buy right now. It's $250. It's fine, but you are probably using a more expensive computer. This might work fine today, but the person who bought this isn't buying a new one next year or in two years. This is going to be a three-year-old $250 laptop in three years. If you have a bunch of videos and a map and a slider and big images and all kinds of crazy stuff going on, how well is that really going to load on a five-year-old $250 computer? So put yourself in the shoes of your audience. Not everybody is coming and has all the resources in the world to load this website. All right, so that's, that's my shaming of everybody to care about this. So now we'll start, like, how do we fix this? What kind of things should we care about when looking at this? First is how do you even know if your site is slow? And how can we measure this? There's a lot of tools uh, about this. You probably know of some. The one to start with, I would say, is Google PageSpeed Insights. This uh, is the tool Google provides to help you figure out how to make your site work the way Google thinks an optimized site would work. It's really nice. You type in your website, you run it, and it gives you uh, a report of how well your site runs. A really cool thing about this, these numbers up here are not just some synthetic uh, Google ran some algorithm and got those numbers. Those numbers actually are from people loading your site in the Chrome browser and the telemetry coming back to Google saying, this is how fast this site loads. Most people have this experience, some people have this, and it takes an average and shows you, in general, how are real people experiencing your site. This is WordPress.org. It's Average, optimizations are medium. This is actually a pretty decent score. Quite a lot of websites are gonna score right in that middle ground. You have to uh, really work hard to get these to be green and to score uh, in the fast zone. So if you're in the average medium zone, you're actually doing a pretty good job. This also gives you a nice list of suggestions of things that it thinks you should do better. You should use a CDN, you should do uh, all kinds of things. Optimize your CSS delivery. It gives you a good list of things uh, that you can improve on. Coincidentally, it always shows you things like this, like, hey, this Google font you have isn't loading very fast, or the Google Analytics JavaScript you have should use a CDN. I'm like, I know, Google. I got this from you. Why don't you just do that? <laughs> so don't worry about those. So let's get to the suggestions. Number one easiest and very impactful thing to do is use a CDN. Uh, Google, the PageSpeed Insights is always gonna tell you if you don't have a CDN to use one. So you might be thinking, okay, what is a CDN? It's a content delivery network is what it stands for. Um, that doesn't really help you know what it is, but what a CDN is is a global collection of servers that you can use to cache uh, your data, specifically large things that you want to serve as part of your page load. Images are the number one thing you would want to use this for. Images are pretty large. Uh, they take up much of the weight of your page and the data that is transferring to the user. Uh, so you want to store these things as close to the user as possible for the best performance. For example, if you're hosting your site and your servers at WP Engine or at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever are in San Francisco, this is what it generally looks like for people to make a request and load all that stuff from your website. People in New York, reasonably close. It's a pretty short hop and pretty fast. <laughs> but think about people globally across the world. Now, this person in Australia, I think their route would actually probably go this way and come across, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, the, it's a long way, is the point. 
And when you think about it, that request has to start over here in Australia, has to go across wires that go under the ocean, go through different countries, through data centers, switches, routers, uh, all these different kind of things, and eventually gets to the server. Then the server sends that data back across all of these wires and the ocean to this person over here. Even though that moves at close to the speed of light, that still takes a while. If you've ever been on a Skype call with somebody in Germany or Bangladesh, and you have to wait for that delay after you say something for them to hear it and laugh at your joke, and then you hear it back, that's the same thing, that same thing happens when you're browsing the web in these countries, or browsing a website that's hosted uh, outside the US. So if you were to use a CDN, you would cache these images and cache parts of your site on these servers all over the world. So the person in New York, they just use the CDN server that's in New York. It's right down the street. It doesn't take long at all to uh, transmit that data. Same thing over here. There's, uh, there's gonna be one in Australia as well. And a lot of these CDN networks are distributed all over the world. This is just an example that has a couple of them. I think like the Cloudflare network has a couple hundred servers, so no matter where you are globally, you're gonna have a server nearby uh, that can quickly serve this data. And these servers are designed to be on the internet backbone and serve, this, serve your images and your data as fast as is possible. They are completely optimized for this. So if you were to use a CDN, there's tons of companies that provide CDNs. It is a fairly commoditized market right now. Uh, they are all pretty good. And pricing is very competitive, so it doesn't cost much money. Uh, and they are competing for your business with nice user interfaces and things like that. Uh, in general, if you were gonna start right now and just wanted to get started in the easiest thing to use, I would go to Cloudflare. It has a really nice interface, it's easy to set up. And you can use it as a CDN forever for free. So you don't really have an excuse not to do this. Uh, there's no cost to it. It's a great service. Uh, I'd suggest getting started with it if, if you haven't already. All right, uh, recommendation number two is to optimize your images. Uh, when these images on your site that you're loading are some of the biggest things that load on your site. So in on a slow connection, these things are really gonna drag down the performance uh, of your site. I don't know if you've ever printed out uh, an image someone took from their phone and emailed it to you, and printed it out like eight by 10, you were gonna frame it, and you got it, and it was kind of fuzzy and blurry and not very good. Well, the same thing sort of happens uh, with the web. That's because it was a low resolution image. Unless you're printing out an image like that, you don't need to have a super high resolution image. People are just looking at these things on your website. They're gonna see it for two seconds and they're gonna read your article and they're gonna click through and move on. You don't need a high resolution image on there that uh, could be printed uh, you know, and hung up on the wall or blown up and shown on a giant screen uh, at a conference. So it doesn't matter if your image is super high quality. Make it the right size and Beyond making it the right size, you can use a service to compress the image even further and make it much smaller. For example, here's an image, 327 kilobytes. Not that big, that's, a, you know, that's an okay size. I wouldn't think too much about that. But if you run it through a compression algorithm, you end up with this image that's 80 kilobytes. It's less than half the size. Now, look closely, 327 kilobytes, 80 kilobytes. I don't see any difference. I recommend to big publishers all the time to run these compression algorithms and go really aggressive on it to size, scale down their images. They're like, oh, we might lose some resolution or it might not look super nice and all that, nobody cares. Nobody is looking at your images. <laughs> And this is a great thing to show people too. You can't tell. You can't tell the person browsing this on their iPhone, on the train, isn't gonna be able to tell. 
This is a huge improvement in size. And this is fairly easy to do. WordPress already does this. When you upload an image uh, in the media library in WordPress, it already compresses it. So just by using WordPress, you're getting, uh, you're getting some of this benefit. But we can do better. It's a very conservative compression that WordPress does because they don't want people complaining that I can tell this is soup, this is very, this isn't quite as sharp as that other image. So they, it's a very conservative compression. We can be much more aggressive. There's a lot of really good services out there that provide this service. You install a WordPress plugin. When you upload an image to WordPress, it sends it off to their servers. They use their algorithms to compress that image, get rid of any data that is not needed, and give you the best looking image as possible while still making it, making it smaller. Some of these even have, well, these don't all have free plans. These are the ones I would generally use. Some of these, like Short Pixel and I think Imageify, have a free plan. You can do 20 images a month or something like that uh, for free. For people like me who have a blog and have posted twice in three years, this is fine. I, this is as much as I really am ever going to need. If you are a publisher and are, this is your business and you're publishing stuff all the time and you're making money on your website, pay some money. Uh, Kraken.io is really good. It's a really nice interface. And it's a very reasonable price for doing hundreds of images. It costs like a couple of bucks a month to do hundreds of images. And then you just use WordPress like normal and you get all the benefits of this. They might notice that Cloudflare is on here. I mentioned this in the CDN part. If you pay Cloudflare for the $20 a month plan, Cloudflare will also compress and, uh, compress and optimize your images automatically. It happens on their CDN, you don't need a plug-in, you don't need anything, it just, it just happens, you just turn it on. So that's, that's a nice option that I like quite a bit as well. All right, number three is use HTTPS and HTTP2. This is, these are kind of, you know, nerdy sounding acronyms and stuff. Um, but what this comes down to is your site in 2018 should be protected by SSL and using HTTPS. If you're with a hosting provider or have some sort of hosting setup where this is difficult, switch to a different hosting setup. This should not be hard in 2018. Uh, Let's Encrypt has really revolutionized the SSL market. You can get SSL certificates for free and everyone is giving them out for free now. There's no reason not to be HTTPS and HTTP2. Uh, the details of why HTTP2 is faster, I'll get into in a second. If you want to test if your site is HTTP2, there's easy online tests. Here's one from KeyCDN. You put your site in, you click test it, and it tells you, yep, this is HTTP2. If it's HTTP2, it's great. You're already getting all the benefits uh, of HTTP2. If not, talk to your hosting provider about switching your site to HTTPS. It should not be that difficult, and don't be scared about it. For why HTTP2 is so much faster, uh, the word is multiplexing. With the old version of HTTP, and if you're not on an HTTPS site right now, to download all those images and JavaScript and CSS and whatever from your site, it's making a new connection, a TCP connection for each one of these. There's a lot of overhead in a TCP connection. A TCP connection is your browser saying, hi, I want this image, and the server saying, okay, I'm going to send the image. Then your browser saying, I am ready for that image, and then the server says, okay, here comes the image, and then your browser saying, I am receiving that image, and the server saying, I have sent the image, and then your browser saying, I have received the image, and then the server saying, I'm closing the connection now. Like, there's a lot of chatty overhead that isn't, just here's, here it is. So with HTTP2, we have one TCP connection where it says, hi, I would like these things, and the server says, here you go, here's all these things in this one connection. 
there's just a lot less overhead. Everything is more efficient. Uh, it's, it's great. It's, uh, you upgrade to this and it's just a free boost in everything. If you have a situation on your hosting provider where it doesn't work out or you want just an easy way to make sure you have HTTP2, we're back to Cloudflare being a great option. Cloudflare gives you SSL certificates. Your browser is talking with Cloudflare rather than directly to your hosting company. And Cloudflare implements HTTP2 and they do a bunch of optimization with it. So it's a great kind of just like slap this on top of anything that's happening behind it and it fixes a lot of problems. So number four is use full page caching. And I'm actually giving a talk in Seattle at WordCamp next weekend about caching where I talk for 45 minutes about this topic. So I'm just gonna gloss over it a little bit here. Uh, but this is something you should also be doing on your sites because it, uh, there's, there's a ton of benefits. For one, your page load times should be improved. For another, if you actually get a lot of traffic or a burst of traffic, your site isn't going to crash. It will just continue to work and be fast. How does full page caching help that? We can use this diagram to kind of go through what full page caching is doing. But first, you need to sort of understand how WordPress actually loads a web page. <coughs> So to start, you're in your browser over here and you type in whatever, wordpress.org. That request travels over the wires, just like we were talking about, thousands of miles. It gets to a server where WordPress is running. Some amount of the 400,000 lines of code in WordPress will then run to figure out what is it you are asking for? Do I have that information? Is that a valid URL? Uh, what should I do with that? Then it makes a bunch of queries to the database to get all your data, all your information about your post, all your content. That data comes back from the database. WordPress does some more stuff to it, builds an HTML page, takes images and CSS and figures out what all needs to be served on that page, sends it back across all those wires and it loads in your browser and that's how you should feel when it loads because it is a miracle that all of this stuff worked and you got a web page. <laughs> so if we want to make that faster, let's just put caching in right here. If you're serving the same page to every visitor, like you are a blog and you have an article and it's the same article for me as it is for you as it is for the next guy, who cares about all of this stuff? When WordPress makes that HTML page, just save it and serve it to the next guy. That's way more efficient than running all this code to figure out what's this URL, where's the data, let me get it out of the database, how do I put it in? Who cares? Just serve the HTML page, get rid of all this, and serve it back uh, to the user. This takes like no server resources to do, uh, to, to serve a cached page. This is why you can host a site on a tiny little server, but if you have full page caching, whatever, like someone posted on Reddit, send you all the traffic in the world, who cares? Like caching can serve those pages all day long, no problem. This is fairly easy to implement in WordPress for the most part, especially if you have a site, like I was saying, it's a content site where it's just a blog or you're serving the same content to everybody, you know, e-commerce, stuff like that, you might be getting into a little bit more complicated of a scenario here. Uh, but these are all uh, WordPress plugins that do full page caching and they work pretty much on any hosting. They are fairly simple. You kind of install them, you follow the instructions, press the buttons and they start working. Uh, if you want a recommendation on what to start with, WP Super Cache is free. And it's pretty easy, it's well supported, it's been around forever and it works well. WP Rocket is one of the fastest ones out there. It is a commercial product. Someone's building a business around uh, building a caching plugin and because you pay for it, they have a budget to make the thing really nice and it is really nice. Uh, so this is a good, uh, good option as well. Uh, but I would suggest starting with this, try it, see how it works for your site. Um, and it sh you should be able to make that work. 
So if you are a do-it-yourself user or a developer or really advanced and want to tinker with things, these are the technologies I use on a day-to-day -day basis to scale WordPress sites. Uh, Varnish is a server software you can install that is super fast and super advanced uh, for caching. It's, you know, more difficult to set up. You do have to write some code. It integrates nicely with WordPress. Um, Nginx is a server software, a uh, web server, but it also will do caching. It's very fast. Um, and Backcache is a Word WordPress plugin that integrates with Memcache. It's not very GUI friendly or nice or whatever, but it is really, really fast uh, if you get it working. And these are things you'd need to know more about what you're doing, but they are also available. If you really want to be like a pro on this, what you would do is do your full page caching at the CDN. Images are easy because you upload an image once, you probably never change that thing. It sits there, it can sit on the CDN forever and who cares, it'll just serve to everyone forever. Your pages and your content, your home page is gonna change a lot. So you need to figure out a way to integrate one of these with WordPress uh, through a WordPress plugin um, or something like that so that it will intelligently clear this cache whenever you post new content. So there's definitely a lot more to this, but if you can cache your entire page at something uh, like Fastly is a really good one for this. StackPath is also pretty good. Uh, this is gonna be the absolute fastest and most scalable way to serve a website because it has the benefit of being geographically close to the end user. Um, and that traffic never gets back to WordPress. It just serves from the edge and WordPress never even knows it's happened and your visitors get that page really fast. This is what we use at 10up on some of our highest traffic sites. We have sites getting 40 or 60 million page views a month that are routinely on like the Drudge Report homepage or CNN.com uh, and their pages just serve out of, out of the CDN instead of uh, back from the origin server. So um, that's the super advanced way to do it if you wanna work in that direction. All right, so number five, to make WordPress faster. If you're using WordPress search, you've probably recognized that it's not really very good. You get, your results are not terribly uh, great and relevant all the time. It's also as you get more and more data uh, and more and more content on your site, it gets slower and slower. So it's not really a fantastic experience. There are some WordPress plugins and third-party services that use an actual uh, dedicated searching technology to provide, to replace the built-in WordPress search. Um, Elastic Press is one done by the company I work at, um, 10 Up. Swift Type is another one. They both use Elastic Search to replace the WordPress search. Uh, they are fast, the search is much better. They will also replace some of the queries in the WordPress admin area, so when you're editing posts and things like that, uh, the post screens and things like that will load faster. So they're pretty nice. They're definitely a little more expensive. If you're looking for something free, these aren't necessarily uh, the right place to look, but if you are getting serious about performance and are gonna spend some money, this is a nice uh, way to uh, get a boost in performance across your site without, um, without getting too deep into development. And this is a big one that I see happening a lot and really impacts the scalability of a site. Stop collecting analytic, analytics data in WordPress. You can collect it, just don't put it into the WordPress database. Where I see this happen a lot is you get a plugin and it's like track 404 errors on, on your site. Oh, sure, I'll click that. So you click that and now anytime someone gets a 404, it puts it in the WordPress database and gives you a nice interface to look at it. 301 redirects, log these. There's a plugin called redirection that has, has that in it. And it's great. This is all great if you have like eight people going to your site a day. If you get a lot of people going to your site, this becomes a problem because database writes are really slow and don't scale. Database reads I can scale all day, but writes are really difficult. And writes are when you're taking data and storing it into WordPress. 
Now, because we're taking data just when a regular person visits the site, if you start getting a lot of people visiting the site, your database is going to get overloaded and it's going to crash. I don't care how much you're paying for your database servers or how fast they are, they will crash. Use an analytics platform. That's what these things are for. Google Analytics is great. It's free and you can learn anything about your site visitors and what's going on by using Google Analytics. Uh, it's fantastic and really powerful. It is a little intimidating to get started with. Don't feel like you need to know everything about it. I would suggest setting it up and reading a couple tutorials, messing around with it. You should be able to find the basic stuff in there and go from there. You don't need to know how to use everything in there to do, to do the basics. Jetpack even has stats uh, included in there. This stuff is all great because it gives you this information, but you don't have to put it in your own WordPress database and your site won't be impacted no matter how much traffic you get. If you think Google's spying on you and you're worried about it, um, Matomo used to be called Pwik and it's an uh, open source self-hosted uh, self analytics thing uh, that you can do. It's not as easy and point and click as Google Analytics, but it's pretty nice and also open source. Okay. So those are my top six recommendations. There's a thousand other things you could do. You can minify your JavaScript and CSS. You can make sure your server is using compression like gzip. You can, I'm not even sure what else you can do. There's a lot of things you can do. Reduce the amount of calls and third party uh, APIs you're calling as part of page loads. So I thought I took this slide out. All right, well this is a good one anyway. Um, so as an example, if you're going to spend a little bit of money, here's how you can configure, configure this. If you want to use a CDN, you can use Cloudflare and pay $20 a month. That will also optimize your images and do all the HTTP2 stuff. You can pay $30 a month or $30 a year for a license for WP Rocket. Uh, Elasticpress.io is $79 a month. We give out discounts all the time, so you can get that cheaper if you want. Um, and Google Analytics is free, so for about $100 a month, you can get a setup like this. There's also, you can use the Cloudflare free plan, use WP Supercache, uh, which is free, and you can do pretty much all this except for the search part for free. So even if you don't want to pay anything, like I don't want to pay anything for my blog site, it's, you, can, you can do these things. If you want to cheat, and do this all really easily, use a managed WordPress host. There's a bunch of these. Like I put GoDaddy and Bluehost and DreamHost and Liquid Web and on and on and on on this list, but all of these managed WordPress hosts give you all this stuff included. You get full page caching, you get a CDN, you get easy HTTPS certificates. Uh, Pantheon even integrates a search, um, integrated search. All you got to do is just install your site on here and then don't screw anything up. And this will, you will get all of these things I mentioned pretty much for, you know, included in, in your cost and you don't ever have to think about it. Plus they have support. You can ask them, you know, if your site is slow, what am I doing wrong? And they'll give you some recommendations. It's a nice, this is the nice benefit of using a managed WordPress host rather than installing it on DigitalOcean or doing like an $8 a month GoDaddy shared plan. Right? Paying the little bit extra to get a managed WordPress host, you get all of this kind of optimization uh, included. So the final takeaways on this, even doing all of this, these are the base things you can do and I think everybody should be doing, but you're never, there's always going to be more you can do and you're never going to make PageSpeed Insights uh, think your site is perfect. I, I don't think I've ever gotten to it to the point where they were like, no, you're optimized, that's great. Nothing more you can do. There's always things that's going to tell you. Don't stress out about that. Just pick at it. See if you can improve it. See if you can think, do I really need that plugin? Maybe I can get rid of it and it'll stop loading that JavaScript so early in the page load. Put, this, put in the CDN. Do I really need images this big? Maybe I can resize these or definitely I can do the image optimization. 
and we have no idea what Google is going to do next. So this is always going to be a moving target. Do your best. They give you some pointers. Don't worry too much about it, but this is never, it's never going to be a thing where you're done. There's always going to be the next thing that needs to be done or the next optimization or uh, the next best thing. So it is something to keep an eye on. And also something I try to focus on when finding a solution is I really believe that a simple solution that's easy to configure that you know you're doing right is better than an all-in-one, this will do everything amazingly solution that you can't ever figure out how to configure or you're not sure if it's working right or, or what it's doing. For a caching plugin, try to pick one that's doing just full page caching and not every other possible optimization. I like to keep the solutions really focused on the one problem I'm trying to solve and not everything else. If you focus on the one problem, you're going to get code that's clean, focused, and doesn't have a bunch of extraneous bloat that maybe you don't want, could cause bugs, could have security problems. As lean and simple of a solution as you can find, uh, the better. Some of these there's not, they all, like Cloudflare does a million things, but it is still a good solution. It is pretty easy to use. So focus on simple uh, rather than complex and being the most amazing. Find the solution that's right for what you're doing, uh, not the most expensive one or the one with the most features. All right, I think that's it. How much time do we got? A couple, 10 minutes? Yeah. All right. Questions? Yeah. All right, you're nice and close. I'll be able to hear you. Uh, silly question. So I just typed in my son on the HTTP2 test, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it being negative. So why do you do Are you using SSL, like HTTPS? I was, and I think I may have gotten an email just the other day saying I need to update that. Yeah. Yeah, the question was about HTTP2. If your site comes back negative on that test, why would that be? The first most obvious thing is make sure you're using your site as HTTPS and the HTTP version of it redirects with a 301 redirect to the HTTPS. If people can still go to the HTTP version, they might still be going to that. Redirect them and force them to go to the HTTPS one. Uh, beyond that, I, it's mostly like a conversation with your host, like, hey, why isn't this HTTP2? And if they give you some cockamamie answer, don't let them tell you that it's difficult, because it is not. Some are still stuck with it, but almost all good hosts now that's, are like defaulting to that. Cool. Um, Yes, with the mic. Hi, um, I wanted to mention that a big sector of the market really does care about photo quality, uh, maybe because it's in the industry for some reason or creative services. Um, and so I, I did want to mention that um, one thing about Google's mobile first in results thing is if you do have alternates, if you have alternate sizes um, loading for, for different devices, that will count as fast loading even, you know. Um, so I guess my question for you with that is, do you have um, pre-built recommendations that you recommend for WordPress users to use that will scale for different sizes? Yeah, inquiries. that's a good question. Um, most of it comes down to your theme and how your theme sizes images for where they go. Um, that's part of how your theme is programmed and built. When you upload an image, it automatically sizes it to the different thumbnail sizes and sizes of where it's used in the content. Good themes do a good job of sizing it appropriately for where it's being used. Even with image quality concern sites, like photo sites and stuff like that, unless you are serving the image specifically to be downloaded or printed, I do think using the image compression technology is still worth it. I don't think people are necessarily going to notice it and you can serve a different, you can have them, you know, click for the full size high resolution image if you're serving like a desktop wallpaper or something. Um, Mm -hmm. 
Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The compression will still help even even those those large ones, but yeah, uh, the retina devices and stuff it gets into a whole thing with responsive design and and it really does depend on how you design the theme and the theme you're using and what you are wanting to convey with your images, what the goal of the images on your site are. So, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, she I found in, in, in sizing images, that if you have a really It does do full page caching. It's not necessarily designed to do that. And there are some guides online for how to do full page caching with Cloudflare in WordPress. And you can make it work. There are some gotchas on like how that works. And I think you, you have to be on the, I think, $20 a month or possibly even the $200 a month plan to be able to do the full page caching. So as you want to do more with Cloudflare, it costs more. The CDN is free and you can just use that forever as much bandwidth as you want. But the features like writing the specific rules to make WordPress cache, that does get into the plans that cost a little bit of money. But it is, it is a good solution for that if you are you know, paying the money for that kind of a plan. Um, we were talking about uh, photos and how we have to compress those. Now, what about videos? Is that a whole other animal? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a whole other animal. And you can host your videos in WordPress, and that works fine. It, it, it's a whole other animal. And personally, I like just having that done with a third party service using YouTube or Bright Cove, or there's a whole bunch of. The link that you want? What's that? So you just put the link that you want? You can embed the video right in your content. Oh, okay. But it actually would be hosted somewhere else. So the other company deals with storing those videos, compressing oh, them for right. the web, okay. creating the web player that works on all devices and all of that. And videos can take, they take up a lot of space and serving them can be slow. In general, I think the best is just to let a third party company that that's all they do, well, that specializes in video serving, let them do it and just embed that in your content because they will all embed in WordPress and most of them have either a plugin or an integration that's really easy to do with WordPress. So I was wondering about uh, your data optimization because that's also a way that it can slow down your computer. Um, the developer lightning round kind of covered it, but it was very, very short. So if you had any suggestions. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there. The question was about data optimization, especially database optimization. Um, I think David was the presenter there. I think the big thing he covered on that um, I would say is to um, not let your options table get out of hand. Honestly, like a bunch of content and a bunch of stuff in the post meta table, all those kind of things in, in the database is fine. Those tables are meant to scale. The options table is not meant to have a zillion things in it. It's meant to have a couple of things in it that are crucial for the site to load on every page. Um, and in general, it shouldn't end up with a bunch of stuff. But if some plugins add things to the options table and they shouldn't. Or this plugin adds stuff to the options table figuring you were only going to add like 10 menu items using that plugin, but you have a need to add 7,000 items because of the way your site is or whatever. And it's like, oh, uh, this plugin didn't account for you doing that. And now all this stuff is jammed in your options table and that's bad. So there are a couple WordPress plugins. I don't know them off the top of my head. I think David might have mentioned one or two, but there's one or two that um, like monitor your options table and will tell you like, oh, there's a problem going on here. You know, you need to look at this. That's where I would start. It's, I don't know if I would say easy. It's not 
as intimidating as it might seem. If you know a little bit about it, you can uh, navigate around. Oftentimes, if there's a problem there, you can, it becomes kind of clear what it is. It's like these things look normal and then, oh, here's 40,000 entries about this SEO plugin. Okay, uh, maybe I need to not use that plugin or do something about that. It's, it's hard if the issue is subtle. So many of the times when I have an issue like that, it's not subtle. It's like, oh, maybe it's this. Uh, oh, oh, no, clearly it's this thing that's completely out of control. Um, so I, that's where I would start. When you get into the subtle things, I would get, I would get an expert. Oftentimes it's not the subtle things. Okay, we've got time for one more question. So video, in terms of video, everyone's aware of YouTube and Vimeo. Are there other video service providers that you'd recommend? I'm not a great person to ask about this, honestly. I don't know that, that many. Those two are great. I know Brightcove is a solution that a lot of big companies use, but it's expensive. I know there's others, but I don't know anything about them, so I'm sorry. Alrighty, thank you very much. All right, thanks.